to make the Democratic Party democratic is actually a good thing and I think will empower us, strengthen us, and create what Jorge wants is the opportunity for new people to come up the ranks and be empowered to be able to do something. Um, and I think that th this process is so exciting because we've all been engaged. Every DNC member ought to have the same opportunity to be this engaged in this kind of process so that their membership actually means something in terms of decision making to direct the future of our country. Um, I don't think we will repeat the, the you know, mistakes of the past. We'll probably make other ones, but I don't think they'll be those. And we talked a little bit about the superdelegate process. Yeah. Obviously, the superdelegates in the past two presidential primaries, or not in 08 and in 2016, have been a really hot button issue uh, for the Democrats. And you said that, or the commission said, they're kind of moving towards reducing the role of superdelegates. Can right. you expand on that? Sure. Uh, the resolution that enabled this commission calls to, for the elimination of about two thirds of the so-called superdelegates, non-elected delegates, non-pledged, they have different names. And I'm confident that will come out of this report and then we have to make sure the DNC itself uh, adopts it. So, I'm, you know, of all the things that are likely to be an outcome on December 9th when we're done voting, uh, I would put that as a near certainty. Well, I, you know, we had supported reducing them to zero uh, in terms of having unba unbound superdelegates. Uh, there was a, a compromise that was reached before the convention between uh, Bernie's campaign and Hillary's campaign to um, uh, eliminate about 65% of the superdelegates. So that's the process that we're going through now. Um, you know, the process that was set up is a long process, unfortunately, uh, and, but we are making progress. And to eliminate 65% uh, of the superdelegates, I think, would be a major step forward. With all of that controversy in two of the major Democratic presidential primaries, why have they not been eliminated altogether? Because when people sit down and think about it, they realize that if you want your Democratic president to be effective, you want that president to be somebody that the members of the House and the members of the Senate and the governors and the party members can work with. And that it's not just about elections, it's about governing. We are one party. And the way the Constitution was set up, you need the president and the Congress getting together. All you need to do to understand how important this is, is look at what's happened to President Trump. So do you think the elimination of the superdelegate process would lead to a Trump on the Democratic Party side? I think that the entire political system has become vulnerable to people like Trump who have no business being president of the United States by virtue of experience and more importantly by virtue of temperament. And that we have opened ourselves up to a very dangerous situation where basically kind of charismatic people can capture a political system even when the other actors in that system know full well that that person is not capable of being president. But it doesn't mean it won't happen to the Democrats, okay? We now are led by a person who is unstable and not fit for office. Well, what do you say to people who say that the Democratic Party is supposed to be better than the Republicans? They're supposed to have an, an open, more open process and the superdelegates take away from that open process. What the superdelegates tell you is what they think of the people running for president and they t you have to listen to them for one reason. They actually know them. Okay, the voters don't actually know them. The voters can be fooled, as many Republicans were fooled by Donald Trump, and they now regret it. Okay, so you want in the process, you want somebody who actually knows the candidates and can evaluate them on the basis of their ability to govern. So look at it this way. You would not go to a neurosurgeon who was not validated by other neurosurgeons, right? You would not get an electrician who wasn't accepted by other electricians. This is, this is a very important office, and we are choosing somebody with no input from other people who govern. But, but let me just one more pushback. Hillary Clinton got virtually all the superdelegates before people even voted, and she lost to Donald Trump. So she wasn't the superior candidate in the eyes of well, the American but people. Doesn't, but I'm not talking about superior candidates. I'm talking about people who are able to govern. And she, there's no doubt that she would have been able to govern. There's no doubt that her colleagues who had worked with her 
thought she would be able to govern. I'm talking about something different, okay? This is the ability to actually function if you get elected. In other words, it doesn't do anybody any good to elect people who cannot govern. We have just done that for the first time in our history, and we are in big danger from this guy. Thanks so much for your time.